Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic to version 12.4. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, of all the what's new in Adobe Lightroom Classic videos that I've ever done, I believe this will be the shortest because there isn't a lot new in this release. Although I do think a couple of the features will prove to be quite useful. Now, of course, this release has bug fixes. It also has some support for new lenses. In the description below this video, I'll have a list of all the lenses that are now supported by Lightroom Classic. The first new feature I want to talk about has to do with the HSL color slider. And if I roll that open, the you'll notice that the HSL section looks like it always has looked. It has the hue, saturation, and luminance sub-tabs, not all sub-tab as well. But what is different here is now you could easily see what colors in your image are being affected when you move a slider. For example, this red slider. This is a very colorful image, and the only thing I know for certain that has red in it are her lips, the red lipstick. But red might be somewhere else, and I'm just not seeing it. Well, all you need to do is hold in the Alt or Option key, Alt if you PC option if you have a Mac, click on that red slider and start to move it and you'll see that everything that isn't red is now monochrome and what is red stays red so you can see what color you're affecting and it doesn't matter what tab you're on. I was on the hue tab. If I go over to saturation do the same thing, hold that alt option key in, you can see it's monochrome. Same thing for luminance here. So you could easily see what colors or what pixels in your image are being affected by holding in that Alt Option key. Now for this image, just for demonstration purposes, I don't see any blue at all. So I go to the blue slider and hold that Alt Option key in and click, you'll see the entire image is now monochrome. So that I think is going to prove to be very useful. Uh, quite often with big expansive landscapes, I'll start moving sliders around and I'm not really sure uh, if I'm affecting a color that I'm not really focused on at the moment with my eyes, and I might be adversely affecting something in the image without realizing it. And this, I think, will help a lot. Now, I did mention that uh, as you look at the HSL section, it looks the same. Well, the color section, there's a slight cosmetic difference. Now, that same feature is here. If you hold in the Alt Option key and let's say click on the red hue and start to move it, you'll see it's now monochrome. But what is cosmetically slightly different is this little dot that now is under this red circle. That means edits were done there. So if I go over to say yellow and I move the hue of yellow, you'll see a little dot will appear. So that's all. That's just a slight cosmetic change to the color section. That Alt Option uh, key works in the HSL and color section for all of the sliders um, that you're dealing with. So that is new and I think that will prove to be quite useful. Now, this next new feature, to tell you the truth, I can't, I'm not sure if this is a new feature for 12.4 or if it was introduced in 12.3 and I just missed it. I'm going to show it to you now. It has to do with the tone curve. I'm going to go to a different image as well. It's this Refine Sat slider. You may be aware that if you're using the tone curve and if you pull down the tone curve, you're going to make the image darker. But quite often when you do this, you'll inadvertently increase saturation. You could see how their skin tones are getting like more saturated. Well, what you could do is then go to this refined sat slider and move it to the left and it will help reduce. Now it's very subtle. You probably, hopefully you can see it in the video. I see it more prominently in this shopping bag over here. But you can see that will just help you um, better match the saturation to what you probably saw when you were taking the photo. So that is new. As I mentioned, I'm not sure if that is new in version 12.4 or if that was in 12.3 and I just missed it. Either way, I wanted to talk about it now. Now, the next new feature has to do with masking. It's just they introduced a grain slider here, but it's a little quirky and I, and I want to talk about it. So I'm going, going to open up masking and I'm going to uh, pick the background. 
And it's under the effects section, they now added this grain slider. So you could remove grain by moving it to left, or you could move it to the right and add grain. Let's just add a maximum amount of grain. But look right here, it says here that size and roughness are global settings and shared across all grain tools. This is kind of odd if you ask me. So you take size up and roughness all the way up. So obviously we added grain to the background. It's not being applied to the models at all. I'll close down masking. And if we go to global adjustments for effects and we see this grain section, obviously grain's at zero because it's just the mask grain that I put up. But notice size and roughness are at 100. And if I just move this a little so they come alive. So they're at 100. Now, if I take those down, see they're affecting the mask. That's kind of odd, don't you think? So they're, they're affecting the mask. And if I go back to the mask and go back to that adjustment, see how size and roughness got pulled down. And that's the same if I add another mask here. So if I create a mask and I select the subject, which are the two models, you could see how I could like add grain there. I could put roughness up and size up, but it's affecting the grain everywhere. And if I go down, back down to effects globally, you can see how it's affecting everything. So I just thought that's kind of quirky how that works. Probably not something that I'm going to uh, use myself. Now, the next thing has to do with the book module. We'll just quickly jump over there and I'll just show it to you. I'm not going to have nothing really here to demo. Um, I believe it's under cell. Uh, these alignment buttons are new. So you could align center, align left, align right, and so on. Line top, middle, bottom. So those, um, are, um, those are new for this version of Lightroom Classic. Uh, let's jump back over to the develop module. The, another thing that's new is if you are creating a preset or if you're copying um, settings from one image to another, for example, let's go back to this image and just hold the command key on my Mac control key on a PC. So I select the other image as well. And if I go to sync, what is new is under the curve section, you now could sync the parametric curve or the point curve independently of one another or sync them both if you want. So before it was just you, you synced the, the curve and no matter what curve you used, if you used both of them, they got synced. If you used one of them, it got synced. Now you could choose which one you want to sync. Uh, whereas before you couldn't. And if you don't know what I mean by point and parametric, if I go to the tone curve, um, this is a point curve. You put points on it and it's this, uh, second one from the left to the left of that is the parametric curve. A lot of people call this the region curve because it says region down here. But uh, this is a different type of curve or does the same thing as far as the pixels are concerned of the image. You either make a pixel brighter or darker, but um, it's just set up differently so you could affect regions uh, of the image. So I do, ha I think, have a video where I go and I talk about the tone curve in detail that is in Lightroom. And um, you could seek out that video if you want to learn more about the tone curve. So that is something that is new. Uh, so again, that is in presets and it is in uh, copy when you're copying settings from one image to the other. And the last thing I want to talk about is in the calibration tab, we have a new process version now for Lightroom version six. Uh, supposedly with this process version, they've improved banding issues. And I don't really have an image that has banding so I, that I could show you the difference between process version five and process version six, but they claim two things. First of all, the first thing is that uh, version six should minimally affect your adjustments that you've done to an image. So if you have an image that's an award-winning image and you've sold bazillion copies and prints of it, and you need to print more, supposedly, uh, and you did all your editing on version five, supposedly when you go to version six on that image, it should look exactly the same. Nothing should have changed. The other thing though they're claiming is that it's a work in progress. So they're going to keep modifying version six, um, you know, with subsequent releases. So uh, be aware of that if you're working on something and it just doesn't look like it looked like last week, well, come here and try going to version five and see if that makes a difference. 
So really, that's all that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.